let's magnify his name together. Glory and power and honor forever unto the King of Kings. Oh, let's lift high that precious name. Let's lift high that precious name. Come on, that's it. From the depth of your soul, let a mighty praise rise up within you under the great God of our salvation, Jesus Christ the righteous. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Ghost is in this place to do wonders. What a precious presence of God we feel here today. One more time, I wonder if we could clap our hands unto him and shout unto him with the voice of triumph. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. What an absolute joy it is to be in the house of God this morning. Do you love what you feel here today? And it's a great pleasure and privilege of mine and my daughter, Sophia, who is with me today, to be here at POA. There is no place like POA. Amen. No place in the world. And what an absolute delight it is to worship the Lord with, with all of you. And we give honor to the great Mangan family. Could we give them a great big hand clap of appreciation and love and honor? God bless Love all of you. Love all of the Mangan family. And we give honor to Pastor Gentry and Sister Lexi Mangan. God bless you. So appreciate you. And what a message you preached last year at Because of the Times. Amen. It blessed me personally. And we thank God for this great congregation. Bishop Mangan and Sister Mickey Mangan, God bless you. Love you so very much and honor you. Let's give them a great big hand. Amen love them so much all that they've meant to us through the years and sister mangan god bless you what an absolute treasure you are to all of us we love you and thank god for you amen whenever i'm with you i feel like i'm with my grandparents amen i am that's right and we love you so very much and honor you sister tenny god bless you we love you sister tenny and thank god for you been such a blessing to our family through the years. Bishop Cox, God bless you. Amen. Love you, sir, and honor you. And we love and honor all that are gathered here today. Can we give the great gathering of God's faithful a hand clap of appreciation for being together in the house of God? And I'm glad Jesus is in this house. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And what a joy it is to be able to praise God with each and every one of you. I will invite your attention this morning to the book of Revelation and also to the book of Isaiah. Looking forward to an amazing week this week because of the times. And our prayers have been with this great congregation. I, I was so blessed as Pastor Mangan was uh, calling for those who would volunteer your time for children's ministry. Because you bless people all across this world. You bless people all across this world and they are recipients of the great blessing of this church and we honor you for the sacrifices you make. Thank God for each and every one of you. From the book of Revelation chapter 5 and I, I will read verses 5 and 6 then I will invite your attention to the book of Isaiah the 11th chapter. Revelation chapter 5 verses 5 and 6. The word of the Lord says this, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And I'll invite your attention to Isaiah chapter 11, and we'll read just a few verses of Scripture in this great chapter from this great prophet, words that correlate with Revelation chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 11, beginning with verse 4, There shall come forth 
a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. I want to speak to you for a few moments this morning, something the Lord has Put in my spirit and upon my heart and I trust that you'll pray for me as I attempt to deliver the word of the Lord but the subject I'll be speaking about today is this the sevening of the Saints the sevening of the Saints could you just lift your voice with me and, and ask God to bless the preaching of his word today thank you God bless you Lord we thank you for your blessing we thank you for your anointing we can do nothing without you you alone are holy and mighty and glorious. And I pray today that your anointing will be upon the preaching of your word. Help us, I pray, to receive your word, to grow in it, Lord. Help us to accomplish all that you would have us to accomplish. Send forth your word to heal today, to enlighten and to help each and every one of us. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask these things. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you in the name of the Lord. You may be seated. I'm talking to you today about the number seven. If I were to go around this room and play a little game we played as children and say, pick a number between one and ten. Uh, and you would most likely have your number selected and you might get a variety of responses throughout this building, but the real spiritual among us would know which number to pick. And, uh, and, and that number would be seven. I don't know why. I, I, it's just it's in us to think of that number very highly. Uh, it's, it, it has a special place in our thinking. And you might say that it is, a, it is God's perfect number. Now, we're not to be superstitious about it. There's nothing mystical or magical about it. But, but there would be those who would say that it's, it's God's perfect number. And, and, uh, and truly, it carries such significance. Sometimes we can feel doubly blessed if we come across it on accident. I've, I've received seven chicken nuggets instead of six at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru before. And that was all the confirmation I needed that God was in this day to bless me. Amen. And to give me increase. Something about that number. And again, it's, it's not mystical. It's not magical. But its place in the scriptures is undeniable. And it carries significance throughout the word of the Lord. And, uh, and, and, and while it, it has this symbolism about it, the symbolism truly represents a substance. And I want to talk a little bit about that, that substance. Because anything that God illustrates on earth has its root system in the heavens so you look to the heavens for for what what has manifested on earth and and maybe why it is but without question throughout the word of the lord this number continues to emerge as one of great significance there were seven clean animals of every kind that entered into the ark the bible talks about seven golden candlesticks in the tabernacle Proverbs chapter 17 describes the seven pillars of wisdom. There were seven churches of Asia, and the one who spoke to them walked among the seven golden candlesticks, and he held in his right hand the seven stars. And all throughout the scriptures, it is replete with references to this number seven. Jesus made seven statements on the cross. And perhaps the the granddaddy of all symbols concerning this number seven in the Bible is the reference to creation itself, the seven days of creation. How that God worked for six days 
And those six days he labored, but that was not the conclusion. That was not the finishing reality of creation. He entered into a day of rest. And that day of rest was the, the culmination of six days of speaking and his spirit moving and a whole earth coming into order. But even the seven days of creation are symbolic. Why seven days of creation? Why seven statements upon the cross? Why seven golden candlesticks? Why seven feasts of the Lord? Why were there seven days in a week? And why were there seven weeks that would result in a 50th day, which we call Pentecost after Passover? And why were there seven years and multiply those seven years to, to by another seven and you come to 49 years and enter into a 50th year of jubilee and on and on the sevens just keep emerging throughout the scriptures and and there is there is a root system and the root system is found in the passage of scripture that we opened with in the book of revelation if you go into the heavens and look at the significance of this number seven you find it in the heavens. You find it connected to the Lamb of God. Seven horns and seven eyes, which John the Revelator say, says represents the seven spirits of God. Now we understand that God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. In fact, God is spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth and he is not a multiplicity of spirits he is one spirit but he expresses himself in seven ways his spirit goes forth with a sevenfold expression of the one true and living god hallelujah hallelujah and that word spirit has to do with the word pneuma. It's connected to breath. We use it in words like pneumatic or pneumonia. And that pneuma is the breath of God. So when we speak of the seven spirits of God, we, we could rightly refer to the seven breaths of God. That when God breathes upon something, there is a result. There is a resulting power. There is a resulting factor. And these seven spirits, these seven expressions, these seven breaths of God, they, they are found in Isaiah chapter 11. This ancient messianic prophecy that refers, of course, to the life of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It describes that he is come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. And then it describes that spirit of the Lord that rests upon upon him and that spirit of the Lord that rests upon him manifests these seven spirits it starts with and if we could if we could demonstrate this on on the screen it, it begins with the spirit of the Lord and then it becomes the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding and the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might or strength and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. This is the sevenfold expression of the Holy Ghost. And these are the, the characteristics of God that begin to operate in a person's life. We see these reflected in the days of creation. From the book of Proverbs chapter number 3, we see a reference to the days of creation. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. In Proverbs chapter 8, there is a poetic prophetic reference to how these seven expressions of God's spirit operate in our lives. Proverbs chapter 8 and beginning with verse 12. I, wisdom, there's an expression of his spirit. Dwell with prudence and find out knowledge. Knowledge is there of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way. And the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. 
Verse number 20, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Hallelujah. Before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was when there were no depths. See, the Spirit of God in its manifold expression existed and is pre-existent to all things. This is God we're talking about. He didn't have somebody to begin him. He is the beginning. He didn't have somebody before him. He is the first. And then and, and we talk about even Genesis 1, 2, that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. But, but before there were waters, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no uh, fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world when he prepared the heavens i was there when he set a compass upon the face of the deep when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the fountains of the deep when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth then i was daily his delight as one brought up with him Daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. The Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters in creation. But I want you to know that that wasn't just some vague, evasive, elusive mist that went across those waters. That was the fullness of his spirit moving upon the face of those waters. It was the spirit of the Lord and wisdom and knowledge and understanding and might or strength. And it was counsel and it was the fear of the Lord moving upon the face of the waters. It was the sevenfold expression of God it was the seven breaths of God moving into each day of creation that brought forth beauty and blossoming and bounty and abundance I want you to know that that abundance is here today let me rise in a fallen world and tell somebody that God is still upon the throne let me rise in a day of darkness and confusion and tell you that the sevenfold breath of God is still at work in this world where we live and move. I don't know what you are facing this morning, but I will tell you that there is a God in heaven who became a man on earth, who took your sins to an old rugged cross, and he died and was buried and he rose from the dead to give you life and that more abundant. And I'm going to tell you where it starts. It starts with the Spirit of the Lord. Make no mistake about it, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It starts with the Spirit of the Lord. What you felt in this house a moment ago and right now is the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Shekinah glory of God. It is the very essence of Almighty God Himself taking up residence in this room. You feel something. Maybe you're here for the first time and you've never felt it before. But friend, it is to live inside of you as a well of living water springing up into everlasting life oh yes it is it starts as the infilling of the spirit of the lord but but it doesn't just remain there you're not just born into the kingdom but things start happening inside of you things begin to develop things like wisdom and knowledge and understanding and strength and counsel and the fear of the lord 
Hallelujah. It's quite an amazing journey. It's quite an amazing process. We might call it discipleship. It starts with his spirit living on the inside. But that spirit starts breathing and moving and operating inside of you. And it's going to take you through a journey, a process. That's why seven is a perfect number. Because when he gets done with these seven breaths in your life, you're... You're going to be complete in him. Uh, oh, I wish I could feel it like I preach it like I feel it right now. Know ye not that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But go ahead and let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Uh, Oh, hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord's doing something inside of you. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't backslide. Don't go reprobate. Let God do what God is trying to do in you. Huh. Oh, hallelujah. It starts with the spirit of the Lord and it concludes with the fear of the Lord now that might that might trouble you just a little bit because we don't like that word and, I, and our thought is hey I don't want to fear God why would I want to fear God I, I want to I love God oh you, you have to understand the fear of God it's different than the fear you're afraid of Here's the beautiful thing about the fear of God. When you fear God, you don't fear anything else. That's the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing about fearing the Lord. Fear is like faith. Just like we wouldn't put our faith in anything else, we don't put our fear in anything else. Fear is like worship. Just like we wouldn't worship anything else, we don't fear anything else. Fear only has torment when we fear things that aren't worthy of our fear. This is why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear is simply moral reverence. That's all it is. And the only thing and the only one who deserves my moral reverence is the Lord of glory. Cancer doesn't get my moral reverence. COVID doesn't get my moral reverence. The possibility of nuclear war doesn't get my moral reverence. I'm not afraid of the Antichrist. I'm not afraid of the mark of the beast. I'm not afraid of anything. I fear God and nothing else. That's what happens when the Spirit of the Lord begins to move and breathe inside of you. Let his spirit breathe in you. Let his spirit move in you. And it'll develop things inside of you. The Lord would, the Lord would allow this seven to appear throughout the scriptures to kind of show us what that looks like. And, and, and I use seven as a verb here because seven really can be a verb. The word swear in the Bible is actually a word that means to seven oneself. So, so in its meaning, the word swear has the number seven as a verb. So, so it, it literally means when God swear unto Abraham, God was sevening the word. He was saying, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply your seed. It's going to be like the stars in the heavens. It's going to be like the sand of the seashore. Now you're going to go through some stuff to get where I'm telling you you're going to arrive. But as I live, saith the Lord, it shall be done. I've come to tell somebody today that if you'll enter into covenant with him, it shall be done. You will have peace in your home. You will have hope in your heart. You will have joy in your soul. It shall be so, 
saith the Lord. Uh, Psalm 23 starts with the Lord is my shepherd. And it concludes with I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now there were valleys and, and there were pastures and there were waters and, and there, were, there were all kind of things in between. There were tables in the presence of my enemies. There was a lot in between. But when it starts with the Lord is my shepherd, it will end with I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If it starts with the Spirit of the Lord, it's going to conclude with a righteous fear of the one true God. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Hallelujah, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. Yeah, throughout the scriptures, it just keeps showing up. And, 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 and this, is why, this is why Elijah told his servant, Brother Silliman, he said, listen, there's going to be rain. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. See, when the seven breaths of God or the seven expressions of his spirit begin to breathe in you, you'll hear stuff nobody else hears. And you'll see stuff nobody else sees. He said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And then Elijah went and prayed. And he looked at his servant. He said, go look out toward the sea. And the servant looked out over the sea and said at these three words, there is nothing. That might be you today. You look out over at the sea and we're talking about blessings. And you look out and you're like, hey, there's nothing. I got nothing. I don't see anything good coming my way. There is nothing. But Elijah said, go up seven times. That is such a tedious process. But do it. Go up one time for the spirit of the Lord. Go up another time for wisdom. Go up another time for understanding. Go up another time for might. And every time you go, I listen, I know you can walk through this process so much. Sometimes you come limping back down. You got arthritis. You've got, you tore your ACL. You've got this problem and that. But keep on walking until the sevening, until the perfecting, until the completing of his work. Because I'm going to tell you, on that seventh time, there's going to arise a cloud out of the sea. I wonder if I could get a witness here today of somebody who can say, I've been through some stuff and I wish I didn't have to go through it, but I understand more now. I'm wiser than I used to be. I'm stronger than I once was. That's the spirit of the Lord. That little girl said to Naaman, there is a prophet in Israel. And I don't know how to explain it, but when he gets done with folks, God has done a work in their lives. Naaman humbled himself, that great captain of the host of Syria. He walks in among Elisha. He's looking for Elisha. Elisha sends Gehazi, doesn't even show up at the door. And Naaman is a little insulted by that. He said, I would have expected him to come wave his hand. I would have expected some kind of a, of a, of a demonstration, a, a ceremonial thing. And, 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 but folks, we're talking about the spirit of God here. We're not talking about the ways of man. We're talking about the ways of God. And may I remind you that his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. They're as high as above our thoughts as the heaven is from the earth. And Naaman walks in to, to this place and Gehazi just said, hey, listen, listen, uh, it, it, Elisha's busy. He can't get to you, but he told me to tell you, go dip seven times in the Jordan River. Naaman ran off like I, that makes no sense to me. He was headed back home. His servant said, listen, if he, would have, if he would have told you to do some great thing, you would have done it. You came all this way. You might as well just do what the man of God said to do. 
And Naaman went down into that Jordan, muddy Jordan, nasty Jordan River. He's got better rivers all over the place, but, but, but he's in this nasty old river. He's like, this is ridiculous. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm going to tell you, folks, it works. He went down one time. Come up. There is nothing. There it is again. I don't see any result. He goes down a second time. Nothing. Third time. Nothing. Fourth time. I'm wasting my time here. Fifth time. But when he came up on that seventh time, the Bible says his flesh was, was made like of that to a little child. And I want somebody to know something today. You're here today and you're in some muddy circumstances and you feel like you can't get your head above water. You're under the water and it makes no sense and you get up just a little bit and you're back down. You stand up again and you're back down. You get a little footing and you're back down. I'm going to tell you every time you go down and come back up, you've got another breath of God blowing. I'm going to tell you, that one trip down, I came up with wisdom. Went back down, came up with strength. Went back down, came up with counsel. I'm going to tell you, you're going to come up one of these times and everything is going to be restored. Hallelujah. To like that of a little child. You must understand... This means that his flesh, the leprosy didn't just stop wreaking havoc. The leprosy wasn't just removed. His flesh was returned to its original state before there was any leprous sickness. All the lacerations were gone. All of the abrasions were gone. Oh, listen, it was like that of, of a child. It went back to before he had acne. He didn't just come up and some of the stuff was removed. He came up with a fresh, clean slate. I'm going to tell you when the Holy Ghost gets done with you, people won't even know what you've been through. There are people in this room right now to look at them. You never know they had marital crisis. You never know they went through addiction. You never know all of the things they've been through. Because God, God returned. <laughs> I don't look like what I've been through. He's sevening me. He's perfect. Uh, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he that had begun a good work in you is able to perform it. He is able to perform it even until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Keep on going down. I know, I know, I know you feel like you can't get your head above water. But keep going down and coming up. Go down, come up. Go down, come up. Get up. Get up in Jesus' name. If you feel down right now, get up in Jesus' name. I rebuke that ungodly devil that's trying to hold you down. I rebuke it off of your mind in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the accuser of the brethren. Every lie of the accuser of the brethren be turned back now in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up. Stand up. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. Even when you're underwater, he's doing it. Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. No, he never stops working. Bishop, those three Hebrew children refused to bow. They would not bow. That, that image stood before them. Music was playing. Everybody was bowing. Everybody was doing it. But they refused and said, we don't care what everybody's doing. 
we're not bowing. Now you can throw us into the fiery furnace, but our God is able to deliver us. Oh, he's able. That is faith in the power of God. But I like the pragmatism. They were also like, but he may not. The possibility. And if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow. That's faith in the wisdom of God. We have faith in the power of God and we have faith in the wisdom of God. But regardless, they were not going to bow. And the king was enraged at this. And Nebuchadnezzar said, I'll throw you into the fiery furnace. They said, throw us in the fiery furnace. He said, I'll heat it up. Seven times. They said, how many times? Not three, not four, not five. You sure you want to go all the way to seven? Because I'm going to tell you, if you make it seven times hotter, that's just the right temperature for a fourth man to show up in my fight. I'm preaching to somebody. You feel like it just keeps getting hotter. It is getting hotter. But with every degree, the spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. One degree wisdom, one degree understanding, another degree counsel, another degree strength. He's sevening you. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When we stand before him in judgment, he's going to say, well done. I want him to say, well done. I don't want him to say medium rare. I want well done, however hot it's got to be. Be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. I said be not weary in well-doing. You commit to well-doing, 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 and well-doing becomes well done. He's... He's sevening you. He's bringing you to a place of completion. And you will have understanding you didn't have. Don't, don't, don't grow weary and give up in this time. I know it's hard. I know you're going through things that are mind-bending and mind-numbing. But keep on keeping on. Endure hardness as a good soldier. There's a miracle waiting for you. Labor for those six days. Just as important in the principle of Sabbath. It's not just that one day of rest. But just as important are those six days of labor. Labor through wisdom. And labor through understanding. And labor through counsel. And fight through strength. And let God work in you. A work that only His Spirit can work. And you will come into, you will be thrust into, you will arrive into a day panting, wore out, but, but all around you is rest. This is the rest wherewith the weary may rest. And this is the refreshing. Hallelujah. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You're coming into a day of rest. We just finished our building. And uh, uh, pastor, it, 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 that's, uh, yeah, that's a process. I don't know if I'm seven or what. I don't know where I am in the process. I lost track of where I am in the process. But I'm in there somewhere, bless God. I I remember just a couple of weeks, actually just this past week. Our first Sunday is a week from today. Praise God. But we wanted to have a couple little practice runs. We just, we shut everything off. We just brought everybody into the new building and we said, listen, we're getting ready for Sunday, but we're letting y'all come in now because this building wasn't built for us. It's built for the people that we're here to reach. And so, so we want to get ready and we want to pray. But I got to be honest with you. I was sitting in my office last Wednesday and I was tired. We, we got to this finish line and I've been working so hard to get to this finish line that I felt like. Now what? Because <laughs> I'm tired. And I'm sitting in my office and I thought, well, God, 
we're going to have to go energize these troops. I got up, stood at my desk, put my hand on the desk and prayed and said, Lord, just give me strength. And I thought, well, we go out there and we'll, I, I sang a couple acapella songs. And, and I had my father-in-law, great missionary, Brother Arlie Enos. I had him preach, and he preached for about 15 minutes and brought the Word of God so beautifully. And I stood back up, and I sang a couple of uh, acapella songs. And we, just, we just, just had a little peaceful time in there, just praying together. And, and then all of a sudden, from heaven, wind started to blow. I felt the wind of God at my back. It started moving upon those people. They became, they, they started rushing the altar and, and praying and prayer filled that house and went up and down the corridors. The children's ministry was off in the children's ministry wing and they turned the corner down the hall of the old building and they could hear the worship of the people. And, and I stood there exhausted looking out over this scene and I felt the Lord speak to me and say, I got this. I'll take it from here. You did what I asked you to do. Now you just sit back and enjoy me doing what I do. And I, I've got news for somebody here today. You've been laboring and toiling and wondering if any of it was worth it. All of it was worth it. And you're stepping into a new day and a new hour and a new season. And God is going to give you rest like you've never had before. It's not going to be your might. It's not going to be your power. It's going to be His Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I would to God that somebody would lift their hands and lift their voice and say, Wind of God, blow! Wind of God, blow! There's a wind of God coming against the back of your family, against the back of your marriage. There's a refreshing coming from the presence of the Lord. If you could stand with me right now, just lift your hands to heaven in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands to heaven in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Here's the thing. I can preach this and tell you that God is working on your behalf. That you, if you'll trust in Him, if you'll put your faith in Him, if you'll come into covenant with Him, He will perfect the work. But, but, but the jury is out with so many people. Not everybody believes. And while we're in this proceeding, I wonder if I could have a witness here today. Of somebody to say, oh yes, it's true. You do make it. Come on, in this house right now, I need a witness. I want some folks that have been through some stuff. I need some folks that have been through the fire. I need some folks that have been through the flood. Come on, I want somebody to make their way to the front of this house right now that can say, I've been through it. I know, I know what he's talking about. And God is faithful. God is able. Come on, I want you to come up with a praise on your lips. I want you to come up here with a shout, a shout of triumph. Hallelujah, with joy in your soul. Wherever you are in the process, if he's giving you new strength, if he's giving you new if he's giving you new patience. Hear me, hear me. I told our congregation, I told our congregation, I said, the Lord is building this house. We're not building it. Our construction team, God bless them and anoint them, but they're not building this house. The Lord is building this house. If I were to have built this house, I'd have done things completely different. I would have started with the footers and the foundation, and that permit process would have been a breeze. It would have been, it would have been the easiest part of this whole thing. But when the Lord builds the house, He's building more than just brick and mortar. He's building His house. I wanted an easy permit process, but God said, no, no, no. I'm going to put patience in here. That's patience goes right here. That's where patience goes. So you're going to wait a year while this process unfolds. 
I'm so glad the Lord built this house. Because we've got understanding now we didn't have before we started. Somebody needs to be thankful the Lord is building your house. That, and I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is saving your family. I know you'd do it differently if it was you, but it's God. The Lord is doing this work, and He's building it in a way you wouldn't have built it. But when it's done, you will say, it is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I've come to tell somebody, the Lord is healing your body. I said, the Lord is healing your body, and He might do it differently than you would have Him do it. But he's doing more than just diagnosis and prognosis. He's, he's building the body, the soul, and the spirit all at the same time. He's sevening you. He's completing you. I wonder if you could lift your hands all across this house and lift your voices unto God. And say, God, you've begun this work. Do it, Lord. You've begun this work. Do it, Lord. Complete it, Lord. I'm not going anywhere, God. I'm staying right here with you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Come on, lift your voice and tell him I trust you.